في نفس الغرس. 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 Once the frankincense traders made it through the foothills, they followed flatter ground north towards what is today the Muslim world's most important sacred site. Yeah. Ahead of us is the city of Mecca, the birthplace of the holy prophet Muhammad. But I can't go there, as the road signs make very clear. It's out of bounds for non-Muslims and forbidden by Saudi law. The traders walk directly from the Asir Mountains through Mecca on their journey north. We have to make a diversion 100 miles west to the city of Jeddah. This is where Muslims from all over the world arrive to make the pilgrimage to Mecca, known as the Hajj. It's a spiritual journey which all able-bodied Muslims are required to make at least once in their lifetime. Today, around three million pilgrims come to Jeddah each year. After frankincense and before oil, the Hajj was the economic backbone of the whole country. Local historian, known as Engineer Sami, tells me how pilgrims made Jeddah a trade center. The pilgrims, when they come here for the Hajj, part of their uh, uh, journey is to trade, to bring things to sell and buy things, and this has been known for, for uh, hundreds of years. Pilgrims travelled here from every corner of the globe, and over time, many of them stayed, making Jeddah today one of the most ethnically diverse cities in the Middle East. The pilgrims' exotic goods were their currency, and frankincense has always been in demand. Smell that yes. frankincense everywhere, yes. and for sale everywhere. Yes, yes. It's very important commodity for the usage. And uh, it's, um, there are different kinds. Some you burn to have nicest men in the sitting room mm -hmm. or in the entrance or the staircase. Different. Can, I have a, can we just have a look? Is yes, we can. Yes, yes, yes. Look at all this stuff. Yes. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum I just wanted to ask you a little bit about the, the incense that you are selling. Um, Engineer Sami was saying you have different incense for different rooms, even. What about this one? Where would you burn this one? Mix. Which, mix? Yeah. You could use in, in, in the sitting room? Sitting room. Yeah. yeah. This one for uh, bedroom. <laughs> Look at you both. You're being very naughty. Is it, going to, is it going to mean that I'm going to run away with you, engineers? I'm going to smell it. Smell. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. It's quite potent. <laughs> is it very expensive? How much for that jar? 25. 25 real. Yeah. But for your wife, I'm sure she is worth it. Very cheap. For her? As sunset approaches, Sammy wants me to experience Jeddah's unique call to prayer. Wow. What timing! Every direction. 36 mosques in one square kilometer. And oh, it's, it's been calling for 1400 years. Oh, that's beautiful. And it is the same word from the time of the Prophet. And look, people oh, closing look their this. shops, and everybody is going to pray. Oh, it's just magical. It's such an incredible sight and sound that I find myself completely overcome. And soon they will be reading Quran and maybe one of them will be reading the story of Jesus and Mary. 
because it's in the Quran and Moses. Look at the shop they're closing to go to play. Look. I feel quite moved. It is a nice experience. Beautiful. Yes. And it's authentic yes. and it's a uh, human. It's not recorded. So each guy is calling. And in the past, 100 years ago, before the introduction of the microphones, they used to go all the way to the top, and he calls. And then everybody hears. Despite being the gateway to Mecca, Jeddah has a reputation of being the most liberal of Saudi cities. But still, with no bars or nightclubs, no concerts or cinemas, and men and women banned from mingling, what do young Saudis do to have fun? Well, this is what the boys do. They play with their cars. The average cost of these modified cars is around £40,000. It's a price that most of these guys, who are students, can afford. The government pays them a salary to go to university. Well, of all the things that I didn't expect to see in Saudi Arabia, it was this. It's my ride, Jeddah style. It's absolutely mad. There's probably, I don't know, a few hundred people here. And these just extraordinary cars everywhere. And it's like a kind of fairground and a freak show, but for automobiles. Why, why do people do this? This is so mad. Can I go in and just run it? Okay. Is it all right? Yeah. Can I? Move out of the way, guys. This is a girl driving. <laughs> you have no idea how dangerous this is. Is the handbrake on? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I probably burnt up half a Saudi oil field. And that is amazing. <laughs> Can I see this one? Because it just looks mad. This car has the strongest hydraulic system in the whole in, in the whole universe. Really? So everything is about hydraulics. Yes, everything is. Although these cars are built to attract attention, sadly, the boys don't have much chance to impress the girls. The authorities don't let these cars out on public roads. They're confined to car parks like this one. <laughs> so great. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I'm terrified. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just a few blocks away, some of Jeddah's girls are having their own fun. But what seems like an innocent game of basketball is actually a risky political statement. Powerful religious clerics have banned girls playing sport in public, deeming it un-Islamic. These students and housewives play their basketball on private property, but despite that, they still risk being arrested. And Dowie isn't happy about them playing either. Now then. <laughs> what does that look mean? Ah, uh, I don't know. What's the problem? Yeah, it's the first time I saw this thing. First time you've seen women playing sport? Yes. Any sport at all? Any sport at all. But does it say anything in the Quran about women not playing sport? No, there is nothing in the Quran saying women cannot play sport. If they are only women, that I will accept it. But when there is a man, I cannot accept it. Mina started the club two years ago with six members. Today, there are more than 100. They are one of seven teams in a women's basketball league in Jeddah. For a lot of women in Saudi Arabia, this is very unusual and not acceptable in some uh, cultures within Saudi Arabia. It is a tribal um, belief, um, and uh, hopefully that will start changing with the globalization, the world being a global village. What if a female member of your tribe was a really good athlete, good enough to go and compete in the rest of the world? This is depends on the, on the family, about the family. If the family accept, yeah. Yeah, why not? would you accept? No. 
Why? I don't understand. I can't that's, understand. That's Why my, would you take that's, someone's that's op my, opportunity that's away? My,